Onc Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onc Live. One of the important developments now that we have a number of therapies available for metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer is to look at the group of patients who have castration resistance but don't have metastases. And there are quite a number of these patients out there, and they exist because of uh, two reasons. One is because of early use of androgen deprivation therapy for patients with a serologic relapse, so the so-called PSA-only patient who uh, is subsequently treated with androgen deprivation therapy. The other group is a, is a less common group, but it's patients who start out with metastases, maybe in the lymph nodes or somewhere, and then they start on androgen deprivation therapy, and then ultimately, uh, progress by having a PSA rise, but imaging shows no evidence of metastatic disease. Uh, so there's a, a, quite a query about, out there about what to do with these patients because they don't really fit into the standard of care um, guidelines that, that govern metastatic disease. So there are clinical trials taking place in that arena. Uh, the study that we presented today uh, was a phase two study of uh, about 125 patients who were treated with abiraterone. Uh, and low-dose prednisone, uh, and the, the study was designed to look at PSA changes. Uh, and 87 percent of the patients who received abiraterone in that setting had a 50 percent decline in their PSA. That's a higher percentage of patients having a PSA decline than we saw in metastatic disease. Um, and interestingly, we have not yet met the median uh, progression-free survival in that group, so we have not yet uh, determined uh, the, the, the time uh, until metastasis develops. So that study's ongoing. It's, a, it's a, not a randomized study. It's a phase two study. Uh, and so it gives very important insight into the efficacy of abiraterone in that setting. But it's not, in my view, going to alter the standard of care in that setting, I don't think. One study that might alter the standard of care in that setting is the randomized phase three study of ARN509. ARN509 is a, uh, a new uh, agent that's very similar to enzalutamide. It was actually created in the same lab. Um, it looks like it may have uh, some uh, potential benefits over the enzalutamide. Of course, this isn't proven yet. It, it has less uh, CNS penetration, for example. And so it might have less fatigue. It might have, uh, in fact, no seizures have been reported with that agent. So that's in a phase three trial. That is a registration study placebo versus ARN509. Uh, and if that study is positive by showing a delay in metastasis, uh, then it is possible that, uh, that we could have a new standard of care in that setting. Um, interestingly, if, that's, if that study is positive, uh, it will also it'll validate, of course, the use of ARN509 in that setting. But it would similarly, I think, cross-validate, if I could use that term, the use of abiraterone and even enzalutamide in that setting by stating that treatment of non-metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer has a value associated with it. Um, and so that's one of the other challenges to, 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 to finish the question is um, what would be the value of, of integrating a, uh, an expensive, uh, potentially uh, a drug with potentially uh, side effects into patients who basically don't have symptoms, basically are probably feeling well and don't even have metastases. So that's a good question. Um, and that is something where, um, you know, if we can show that we delay or they, uh, it can be shown that there are delays in metastasis, delays, further delays in the need for opiates, and of course, improvements in survival with the earlier use of these drugs, it would validate their use. And it would really be a change in philosophy in a way uh, in the management of this disease, similar to the way that the charted study is changing our philosophy about chemotherapy. In the previous decade and before, the philosophy was be reactive. When patients have symptoms, when their disease progresses, then you do the chemotherapy, then you do the abiraterone, et cetera. Now we're gradually moving into more of a proactive philosophy, right? Treat the PSA because we want to prevent the metastasis, prevent the pain, improve the survival. So we'll see. Those are important studies that are being done, uh, but it's going to be a while before we have fully mature data. One potentially uh, new agent uh, that's going to be interesting to watch is galeterone. Galeterone is interesting because of a couple things. One is it has properties that it shares with both abiraterone and with enzalutamide. It appears to bind to the androgen receptor. It appears to lower androgen production. And it also, interestingly, may have some activity against tumors that have the ARV7 variant. 
Now, there's a very small data set that came out of one of their phase two trials, which showed that a majority of patients who have ARV7 responded to galetarone. And when you compare that, even though it was a very small number, I think it was seven, uh, when you compare that to the abiraterone and enzalutamide data, which essentially says that no patients respond to abiraterone or enzalutamide if they have V7, it suggests that this could be a, a niche that galetarone could, could fit into. Uh, and so the, one of the studies that's underway, uh, which is very interesting, is going to select patients who only have the uh, ARV7 uh, variant, and it's going to test the efficacy of galetarone in that population compared to a control. And so that would be, if positive, uh, a big step forward for a couple of reasons. One, it would be a new drug. Two, it would, it would be a prospective validation of a biomarker-driven uh, randomized trial.